In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern. We have a few impactful storms moving in from the north, actually mostly dipping southward into the eastern states. So we're going to take a look at that throughout this video. Also, be sure to stay tuned. We do have the Storm Prediction Center outlooks at the end of the video. We do have a couple of big time severe weather outbreaks expected uh, throughout the next uh, few days and over the next week or so. Uh, also, big temperature flips on the way, so a whole lot happening as we're still in the transitionary period of the springtime. Obviously, we are really, really reaching close towards summertime, but still seeing those fluctuations that are common for the spring months. Let's go ahead and just dive towards tomorrow afternoon. And we see a lot of th thunderstorms present, and this is going to be for a lot of the mid-Atlantic down through some of the southeast Ohio Valley into the deeper south central states, especially in here we're watching for some severe weather potential. Um, but among uh, the east coast, we also see a marginal risk as well. Now, we do see a 996 there for Colorado. Some snowfall occurring there for Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, down through Colorado as well. So still some wintry weather as we're almost into meteorological summertime. Crazy, crazy stuff. As we reach towards Friday on May 24th, we do have a 997 there. I almost said 994. 997 up here between North Dakota and Minnesota. And this is causing a lot of severe weather activity here around the middle portions of the nation. States like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, all need to be on high alert here for Friday on the 24th as this looks like a rather elevated day in my opinion. And a lot of the southeast still seeing some marginal chances of uh, thunderstorms, not, um, not to be confused with a marginal risk. I'm using that term uh, not in the storm, storm Prediction Center term, but more of just like a general term there. Uh, not to be confused with general thunderstorm risk. I guess I should just stop there. Let's just keep going towards Saturday afternoon on May 25th. And as you can see, again, thunderstorms occurring throughout Oklahoma, Texas, deeper south, up into the Ohio Valley, and up and down the east coast there as well. And then back for the northwest, we see a lot of that more wintry look, okay? I would say more like spring or fall look, but still wintry in, in regards to that snowfall that is occurring for a lot of states like Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, all of these areas seeing some snowfall occurring. 1,005 up there for California, 992 for Colorado, and 1,002 there for uh, Montana. And this is all leading towards some snow and rainfall showers up there in the northwest corner of the nation by Saturday on the 25th. By the time we reach Sunday here on the 26th, we see a low pressure system, 995, rising up through the upper Midwest. And I suspect we're going to have a pretty big time shot at some severe weather along and around this low pressure system for Sunday on the 26th, especially overnight 26th into 27th here. As you can see, there's plenty of activity happening to the south of this low. We would really want to be watching these areas throughout the Ohio Valley and deeper south here. By the time we reach Monday afternoon, the 27th, we will see plenty of thunderstorms developing throughout the deeper south up into the kind of northeast, mid-Atlantic, and Ohio Valley corridor there. By the time we reach Tuesday afternoon, all of that will have passed. Still a 990 over Canada, and we see cold air pouring into the northeast, mid-Atlantic, southeast, and even into portions of the south-central states. Uh, and we see warm air rising for a lot of the west and rocky states here. So your overall jet stream would look something like this. And um, we'll take a look at the temperatures at the end of this video. But again, very strong cold front right here. Cold air is rapidly moving in behind it. Uh, especially here in this corridor would be the coldest area in general uh, during this particular model run on Tuesday afternoon, May 28th. Now, for Wednesday afternoon, we kind of get a secondary cold front that develops along this 990 here, 1005 secondary low pressure system. And we overall see this kind of cold front boundary look. Could see another round of potential thunderstorms and severe weather behind all of this for Wednesday, maybe even into Thursday. We'll have to see here in a second. Uh, we do see some showers and snowfall occurring here for the northwest. This could start to force the warm air eastward. Again, we will take a look at those temperature patterns at the end of this video where we'll see a lot more. Uh, for Thursday, 
we see a lot of this eastern activity does come to an end we see some hanging on there for the mid-atlantic and northeast areas across the central states we do see some thunderstorms prevailing especially here in the upper midwest as we have this kind of really bowed out look with this cold air so could see some colder air trying to be on the move here very warm air rapidly rising out ahead of it as well so pretty decent severe weather chance here for the northern plains and upper midwest for thursday on the 30th uh friday the 31st here we see again this this middle portion of the nation really prevailing the most with these thunderstorms and severe weather and then for saturday the first we don't get all the way to the afternoon but it looks like again the central states but now expanding a little bit eastward as well could be the heart of that activity. Now, for your European AI model, I wanna move us to hours 240 and we can just work beyond it here. So let's see what happens for Sunday the 2nd. Again, a lot of this moving eastward here. Uh, and then especially by the time we're reaching Monday on the 3rd of June, we see the Southeast really getting engulfed with some of these thunderstorms. Uh, and then also some of the upper Midwest. Tuesday on the 4th of June, Again, southeast, up and down that east coast area. 5th of June, the same thing. 6th of June looks to die off here for the east coast, but somewhere along this Gulf Coast still could be seeing plenty of thunderstorm activity. So we start to see that activity shift eastward on this model in the long range. We'll have to track and see if that is what in fact happens moving forward. Total precipitation really shows us that this is the main area to watch. Obviously, it usually is during the springtime. But we've seen a ton of activity, including a very massive Iowa tornado yesterday. I saw all the videos of that. I mean, truly, um, I have never seen a tornado quite like that one. Um, and we have seen so many storms like that this year and so many tornadoes. It has obviously been an extreme season. And it's unfortunate when you see this look of continued activity throughout the areas that have already been battered. And that is exactly what I'm seeing here. In addition, uh, we see the East Coast seeing some, especially starting at kind of the southern mid-Atlantic up through the northeast. The southeast does get a little bit spared here with pretty average to below average activity. Northwest is near normal, and then southwest is nearly nothing, which is also nearly normal for this time of year. For the total snowfall, we have seen it back off a little bit. We see that the Cascades are expecting a few inches, still a foot to two feet over the Rockies, and I feel like I'm a broken record at this point, and I've been saying the same thing for about a month. So we will continue to track this over the coming days and see what ends up happening. Temperature pattern, let's dive into it. We see warmer temperatures in the east, colder out west, until about early next week. Here's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday here. Cold air prevailing along the east coast. And that really holds true until maybe the first week of June here when we finally get warmth better. Yeah, this is the wrong direction. When we finally get warmth building in to the east and some colder air working its way down the west coast, that could be the nearest that we see really an overall warmer than normal pattern over the central and eastern states, unfortunately. Here's the Storm Prediction Center. Day one outlook, we have for general thunderstorm risk areas in the lighter greens. And that's where you expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible. So be, a, be sure to heed every watch warning and advisory still. Darker green areas are going to be your level one marginal risk where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. Your yellows are going to be your level two slight risk where we expect scattered about severe weather reports. Your orange over Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, that is where we have a level three enhanced risk where we expect more widespread severe weather to be possible within there. That's for today on Wednesday, the 22nd. Let's take this towards tomorrow on Thursday, May 23rd. And what we see is in the lighter greens, general thunderstorm risk areas. Again, your darker greens, again, the marginal risk area, and then the yellows there throughout the plains. Again, that slight risk. For day three, which will be for uh, Friday on the 24th here, what we see is four general thunderstorm risk areas in Idaho, Montana, northeast uh, in, in northern uh, Maine there, and then southern Florida, and then throughout a lot of the eastern states, we're seeing that again, uh, those general thunderstorm risk areas. And then we do have a marginal risk again for the Midwest and some of the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes. Let's take a look at the extended outlook because we do have a day four outlook here for Saturday on the 25th where we expect at least a slight risk here for areas like Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and northern Texas. But day five is when things really get going here on Sunday, May 26th. 
because we see not only this yellow area that roughly translates to a slight risk, but also we see this orange area here right by the Mississippi River. And that is where we have uh, basically what translates roughly to an enhanced risk or more. This is usually reserved for some pretty high end events. So we do expect some pretty major severe weather to be possible here on Sunday, May 26th. We'll be watching it closely, of course, and we will be tracking it over the coming days with you guys. So be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.